everyone. Welcome to Cooks of Crocus Hill. This is Tracy today here on our, in our Grand Avenue kitchen, uh, getting ready to do some awesome empanadas, Mexican inspired for Cinco de Mayo. Um, I have a pan going over here with a little bit of olive oil. Um, to this pan, I'm gonna add some garlic so we can start getting that nice and golden. It's really minced finely um, for the filling for the empanadas. So we're gonna work pretty quickly here because we don't want uh, to add any color to the garlic so that it doesn't taste um, burnt or too toasted. Um, we'll add that in there. Once I can see that that's cooked and I've not gone too far, I'm gonna go ahead and add my ground beef. You can certainly add whatever kind of uh, ground meat you'd like. Even a pulled chicken or a pulled pork uh, would work just fine in a filling. Just like that. Working pretty quickly here to stop our garlic from cooking. Breaking down that ground beef. Get them in nice, small, bite-sized pieces. I do have it at a medium heat, nothing too high. I'm not looking to cook it all the way through at this point. So while that's cooking, I'm gonna chop up my chipotle peppers in adobo sauce, and those are right here. I'm just going to turn my container here onto the counter and this is what they look like. And I'm just going to give them a quick chop. You can do one, two, or three. It really depends on what flavors you're really trying to bring out in the empanada. I've decided to use three here. And I will continue to add my other spices now once I incorporate the chipotles. This medium heat seems to be working just great for me, so I'm gonna leave it there. So to this mixture, I will add some ground cumin. Some chili powder, and today I'm using a dark chili powder. Regular chili powder would be just fine. And I have one tablespoon in there. I'm gonna add about half of an onion. Again, I'll stir these. My onion is also mince, or very, very fine dice will work as well. And I'm just working to incorporate all of these ingredients. I'll add a teaspoon of salt right now. I may adjust and add some more a little later. And I'm also gonna add a tablespoon of the adobo sauce that was in our chipotle, with our chipotle there. It is pretty spice heavy, so I am going to add a splash of water just to help incorporate all of those spices and flavors. I'm going to do a couple turns of my pepper mill here for some fresh cracked pepper. That's black pepper. And I chopped about a half a bunch of cilantro. I'm gonna go ahead and add that now. Really 
really pretty once you add that cilantro in there. Is it a really nice pop of color? I am going to stop now and give it a taste for um, salt. Want to make sure that it's properly salted and that uh, I don't need to add any more of the um, spices that I've used already. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's good. And I'll turn this off and put it on another burner that isn't done. Awesome, now that our uh, filling is cooling, I'm gonna work on uh, making my discs from my empanada dough. So I'm gonna put some flour right on our counter here. I am going to just, with my bench knife, cut a piece of dough off from our dough ball and I'm going to rewrap my dough ball. And I'm doing that because I really want to make, keep it uh, nice and cool, be working kind of fast so that our butter doesn't melt. And then I'm going to be, uh, I want to make them somewhat uh, large, not too small. So I'm looking at golf ball size and I'm going to roll it in my hand quick to kind of form a ball like that. A little more flour. So as round as possible. If they're a little rustic, no worries. They'll still be delicious. A little flour on my rolling pin there. And then I'm going to work on and you'll want to work a little quickly because butter it'll start to melt right away. So we're looking at empanadas about that size. Then I'll take my other piece and kind of work my way through the dough. You don't want to work the dough too much in your hands or when you're putting the dough together um, because it will, it, the dough won't be as flaky when you are uh, frying them up or baking them off. So the less amount of time you spend handling the dough, the better product you'll have. And I made my dough probably about a, uh, an hour ago, I did want to have that time, that time. I wanted it to have enough time in the cooler to get nice and cold so that I could really work with the dough without it melting, the butter melting in the dough. All right, so we've um, had our empanada discs chilling in the cooler. Um, we have our meat mixture, our filling already cool as well. Uh, on the stove top, I have a saute pan uh, with some oil so that we can shallow fry these. Um, so I'm gonna start with my first disc. It's a little cold, really great to work with. I'm gonna put a little bit of flour on the soapstone again. I'm also going to make a little pile of flour just over by my forks forks and you'll see why I did that in just a sec. Um, to my empanada I am going to add uh, about a tablespoon, two tablespoons of filling. Depending on the size of your empanada uh, you can gauge about how much to add. I will ask that you resist the urge to overfill. This is something that I always have to repeat in class is to resist the urge to, to overfill because people always want to add bunch of filling to them. Um, but what happens when you do that is that it won't um, will leak out of the sides or it won't close properly. Um, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of cheese to the top of the meat mixture. Like so. Put it right back on my counter here. I have an egg wash here in a bowl. It's one egg with a quarter cup of water. with my basting brush here. I'm just gonna run it along one side 
my empanada like so and then I'm going to fold fold it over I'm just going to tuck tuck in the filling fold it over like so and just press it with my fingertips to make sure that it's nicely sealed and then to ensure that it's sealed I'm going to use the tines of a fork run it through my flour there and I'm just going to press down on the empanada like so being careful not to pierce the middle but just press it down enough to seal the edges to crimp the edges of the empanada like so So we've assembled all of our empanadas and we're ready to fry. Our uh, saute pan, the oil is at temperature at 365 degrees. So I've just to test the oil, I've placed the um, empanada in the oil. And what I'm looking for is to get, just to get a little bit of browning on the outside, not a ton of color. Um, considering that the filling is already cooked through, you don't have to uh, keep it in the oil for very long. So that is done. That's what it looks like there. Put it on a plate. And that's our empanada. Happy Cinco de Mayo. All right, so here's our finished empanada. Uh, I am gonna take a few minutes to whip up a few more, but if you like this video, please press the like button um, and please view our other videos. Go to our blog and look at our recipes and all, all the other great videos we have on there as well. Thanks so much for watching.